Mr. Beast literally puts his life on the line with so many of his challenges. And we're gonna talk about that as well as hashtag Team C's. A marathon is 26 miles. And today with no prior training, we're going to attempt it with the world's largest pair of shoes. I'm nervous already because two problems arise here. One, running a marathon with no prior training, incredibly bad for your body. Now, I'm not just talking about your joints, your muscles, your tendons. I'm talking about your kidneys. When you have a rapid breakdown of muscle tissue, which happens during a marathon because of the tremendous stress your body's under, you actually break down that muscle tissue, releasing myoglobin, which is actually toxic to your kidneys. No joke, I've seen people who were untrained run a marathon and then pee blood after. Wow. <laughs> and then running in the shoes, obviously, that's ridiculous. My man, everything's gonna hurt. Anything you put into your shoe, the amount of foam there, the flexibility of your sole, that will affect your ankle, then your knee, then your hip, then your low back. Each of these shoes weighs five pounds. That's 10 pounds in total. You know what's gonna probably be sorest on him? Knees for one by far. Also on his anterior tibialis muscle, because that's the muscle that has to bring the shoe up in order for you to take a step without tripping. And it's gonna be even worse with this giant shoe. The shoe was constantly scraping the side of my feet and it was getting extremely painful. So we had to do some modifications. So they're wearing a shoe over a shoe. Do you see how important proper footwear is? The human body works through a biomechanical motion that has evolved over millions of years. And it's all very well thought out. It's a beautiful process, actually. Your weight distribution, how your foot strikes the floor, and how the muscles bear the weight of that impact, and how your arch is supposed to take in some of that force. You negate all of that by strapping this giant shoe to the bottom of your foot. And this is Joey Chestnut. Oh, Joey Chestnut. Joey Chestnut crushes it at the hot dog eating contest. What the freak is he doing? This is as fast as I can eat. Competitive food eaters scare the life out of me because I have no idea how they consume an absurd number of calories and don't A, put on weight, B, don't rupture their stomach. It's just like a magnificent feat. It's almost like magic. Think how much salt is in there, how much sodium is in there. That's a huge load on your kidneys. What do their bodies go through? There's no way I can do this, man. Oh, he does it so fast, too. One final bite. Don't. Oh my God. Before we started, we weighed him and he weighed 229. Let's go see what he weighs now. That was one of the hardest challenges of my life. Step on wow. the scale, let's see how much weight you gain. No way, he weighs 250. Well, he drank a lot of water too. God, I can't imagine what going to the bathroom after that must be like. Not gonna lie though, I would probably fare pretty well at this. We will be spending 24 hours in this insane asylum. First of all, we don't call them insane asylums. We don't have insane asylums like this. We actually also moved away from using restraints in patients. We prefer using someone to watch over them, perhaps medication options to help calm them down. But this is just like really barbaric. This is like what used to happen 200 years ago. So we were letting Chandler poop and um, I tore my labrum and my shoulder like popped out of socket and it really hurt. How did he tear his labrum? Ooh. Like, <laughs> the fact that his shoulder dislocated is a really big problem. The most common form of uh, shoulder dislocations are anterior shoulder dislocations. You need to put them back because otherwise it's really a lot of pain. Uh, the doctor that said that they're pretty sure that I've blown uh, either one or both of my eardrums uh, because my eardrums are full of pus and stuff like that and I have an infection. This is a, a difficult explanation here. He may or may not have blown an eardrum, which you could see if you just do uh, an otoscope exam there. If that's the case due to an infection, that would be treatable with antibiotics. So I'm not sure if there's like a eustachian tube dysfunction that's also simultaneously going on, which is the tube that connects your sinuses to your ears, which can make like popping sensations, pressure differentials become quite painful. The idea that he has just like nighttime ear pain randomly warrants further investigation, or at least a better explanation for me. In this video, we will be eating a $70,000 pizza. That's an expensive pizza. You have an ounce of gold that's covering the crust, 10 year old Parmesan bechamel. Japanese beef has been marinated overnight in a $10,000 bottle. This of is so ridiculous. This is only in America. Gold is, is an inert substance, so it's gonna just like go through your digestive system and you're gonna poop it out. Not something I recommend eating regularly. Don't eat metal. Like, I feel like that's a pretty standard piece of medical advice. Oh my God. <laughs> Straight up, I really, really like it. Oh, no way. So we're going to act like my channel was hacked and the only way for me to get my channel back is to raise a million dollars through selling body parts and organs. You see, your body parts are actually worth a lot. They are, but they're not legal to sell, especially here in the United States. There is actually one country where you can sell your organs and it is legal. It's one country in the whole world. Iran. Kidneys are 20, 200,000, whoa. 
I can get 200 grand for a kidney? You can live with one kidney, but you have to be very careful in that instance because you got to take care of your sole kidney. You got to watch out for medications that you can take that can negatively impact your kidneys. Advil, Motrin, Aleve, things that you wouldn't even realize could pose a serious, serious risk to your kidneys. Skeletons, three to five grand now. Who's selling skeletons? He's definitely reading like a board game thing. Like <laughs> this has nothing to do with reality. Livers. Okay, so according to this article, obviously you can't live without- No, you can't live without your liver, but if your liver is damaged, it does regenerate. And if you cut pieces off, we actually see it regenerate. So technically, if I donate half my liver, the other half will grow back. Therefore, I'm definitely selling half my liver. So we're gonna add that to the list. He has a Microsoft Word file open selling his organs. According to this article, People can survive even if an entire lung is removed. I actually had a friend growing up. His dad was unfortunately attacked in New York City as a, a taxi cab driver, and he was left with only one lung. You can live with one lung. A gram of bone marrow is worth $23,000 on the black market. You could actually do bone marrow donations even now for people who are battling cancer. For example, my mom needed bone marrow donations from individuals, so don't expect to get 23 Gs though. I'm going to attempt to sit underwater for 24 hours straight. This this is this one's painful to watch because a lot happens here. I have this tube right here, and this tube is going to be constantly feeding me oxygen. There's just so many variables and stresses that his body's gonna have to face. Like his skin's gonna prove. He's not moving well. Cramps of his muscles. He's also gonna have obviously sleep deprivation because he's gonna be up for 24 hours. There's just a lot of things that can go wrong and very easy for him to feel unwell and need to leave the challenge. And my hands are so soft. Also, I think this is a chlorinated pool. Extended exposure to chlorine actually can cause skin irritation, damage, rashes. When you see individuals spend a ton of time uh, submerged in water, their skin actually starts breaking down and then they start getting fungal and bacterial infections. The skin prune thing is probably the most interesting part of this video because a lot of people assume that skin pruning has something to do with electrolytes or things like that. That's what I even used to think. This is an autonomic nervous system response that helps us better navigate wet surfaces and wet objects. And the way we actually found this out is because we found those who had nerve damage to those areas weren't pruning in water. So it's crazy that our bodies have evolved in order to help us survive when we get wet by giving us extra traction as if we had tires on our feet. How cool is that? Oh boy, I need some more air. I wish he had an oxygen sensor in there to know how much oxygen he's getting. There may have been periods of time where there was a lot of CO2 in there, not enough oxygen. He could have easily started developing hypoxia from lack of oxygen in there. So little update, it's actually starting to get a little freezing in here. The water being not body temperature, even if it's 70 degrees, you know, it may feel okay. It could actually cause you develop hypothermia in like a few hours because the water is so cold and your body's not acclimated to this because your natural body temperature is around 90 98 degrees, you can start developing hypothermia because you aren't able to keep your body temperature up. But I randomly started feeling extremely sick while sitting underwater and I had to come out. Like I just had this strong urge to throw up. I think it's because the water was constantly moving. I was just getting really seasick under there. Seasick, hypothermic, pruning, hypoxic, not enough oxygen. There's just so many variables in here that make him feel unwell. It's not surprising that he had to come out. I'm gonna spend the next 50 hours buried alive in this coffin. Probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. This one legit it scares me because he's gonna be trapped in there for a while. Oh, stop. Oh my God, imagine he fell through it and he just fell right onto his body, broke a rib. Oh. I tried to turn around. It was like very narrow on the other end. I love that he has food and hydration. That's all important. I really hope he stays mobile in this thing. By not moving for long periods of time, blood actually stagnates in your body, especially in the lower extremities. You could actually have clots form that then can get loose, shot up into your lungs and cause a pulmonary embolism. You've officially made it underground 24 hours. Wow. Wait, really? So how do you feel after being in underground for 24 hours? My back hurts. Starting to feel claustrophobic. Claustrophobia is a legit phobia. A lot of people suffer with this. It's one of the top phobias in the United States. When you're not moving, you're putting pressure on certain areas. You could actually develop bed sores. For patients who are paralyzed, we have to constantly reposition them. Otherwise, we have decreased circulation of skin to that area. It starts getting red at first, and then it actually opens up as a sore. It can turn black and like a full hole in the body. I have to poop really bad, but I've decided just to hold it. Not pooping for 48 hours is not the end of the world. You know, patients can go a week without pooping. And obviously that's like, a constipation diagnosis, but it's not something that is lethal or deadly. 
This is probably the most dangerous part of this video because if any of that fireworks smoke actually got into his coffin, he can actually get really sick from carbon monoxide poisoning very fast. And they might just think he fell asleep, but he's actually developed carbon monoxide poisoning. That's one of the symptoms. Do not allow smoke to occur in an enclosed space. That is literally deadly. The reason I actually reacted to all these Mr. Beast videos is because I've teamed up with him and creators from all around the world to promote Team C's and the international effort to raise $30 million to remove 30 million pieces of trash from our oceans, rivers, and waterways. All you have to do is head over to teamseas.org to learn more and donate as little as a dollar to remove one piece of trash. Or simply share this video with the hashtag Team C's to help make sure that our oceans are happy and healthy. If you want to watch me kick some butt and box, literally box, because I'm a doctor boxer now. Click here to check that out. And as always, stay happy and healthy.